Hello, everybody, and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. Uh, we're pleased to have as a guest today a member of the educational community here in uh, Portsmouth. He is Rob Kelly, and he's the head. It's the head of the school That's of right. Penfield. I guess we don't have principals and masters and all that anymore. Head. That's all right. Welcome to the show, Bob. Well, my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, you know, anybody in town or anybody that goes down Sandy Point Road sees this wonderful campus over there and wonders what it is, and it's Penfield School. Can you tell us a bit about how you got here? Well, my educational background, yeah. it, it started when I was in high school. I really liked coaching kids, and I played sports in high school, played sports in college, and wanted to be like every other kid, wanted to play like in the Olympics and get involved with athletics. So I started coaching and then getting involved in some tutoring and teaching, and then ended up going to Tufts University, and then from there uh, landed in Buffalo, New York, where I am... Um, remain a Buffalo Bills fan. Um, oh. I know <laughs> this is going to be a good Aren't year. Aren't you a little afraid? <laughs> <laughs> I am not. So um, I worked at an independent school in Buffalo. Um, loved it. I was there for seven years. And then after that, I went to a boarding school for 12 in Western Mass called Willis and Northampton School. I was head of a middle school there. Mm. And then uh, in 2004, was looking at some other opportunities. And saw Penfield School and ended up uh, coming in 2005. And it, it, it's an amazing community of people that are down to earth, caring, um, honest, um, hardworking folks. And it was, it's been great. So I've been, this is the start of my 15th year at the school. If, I know, 15 years. It goes you by in a flash. You don't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they hired me because I had four kids that I brought to the school, so oh, I increased enrollment significantly. You brought your way in. <laughs> You've, that's a remarkable background, and, and, and Penfield is, is certainly uh, fortunate uh, to find you or you find them one, one way or the other. That, that's quite a background to bring to, uh, to enhance the program there. How, uh, tell us a bit about the Penfield School itself. How did... Where did it come from? Where did it originate? And what did the steps did it go through it, before it landed on this beautiful sure. campus? It, it's a fascinating story. Um, the, the 70s were quite a tumultuous time when there was a shift from the 60s, the conservative uh, nature in the early 60s to the late 60s, where it was the opposite. Uh, with the Navy leaving, uh, the destroyers leaving in the early 70s, mm. all of this change. and. There was an independent, there is an independent school called St. Michael's Country Day School, great school in Newport. And in 1971, there was a disagreement within the school. And the head at St. Michael's, his name was Father Cranston, great guy, he was fired. And what happened was he left, obviously he was fired, brought a bunch of kids, a bunch of faculty, and formed the new school. And the new school. Yeah, the uh, new school. Yeah. And it was new because they couldn't think of another name. So it was a new school. And its first, the first two years were at Cary Mansion, which is off of Bellevue, uh, right by Salve. Mm. And then from there, after two years, and quite remarkably, that at the end of the school year, parents moved all of the class materials, desks, and everything into the attic. Um, they painted classrooms, this real sense of community uh, in the early 70s. From there, that they went to um, a school on Wapping Road that now is a parking lot. <laughs> uh, so it was there for a bunch of years on Wapping Road. Um, and then after that to Forest <laughs> Avenue School in Middletown. After that to the Cogshill School on East Main Road. And then, um, sort of around two, the year 2000, it, it, the school desperately needed a permanent home. And so there was a, a campaign called the Homeward Bound Campaign. Yep. Um, generous donors, and, and they bought this beautiful property, built the school. It was completed in 2004, and uh, it, it, it's magnificent. It, it's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a homely 
farm-like setting, you know. Exactly. With the, the, there is a, like a farm in front. I don't, I don't there's a start. paddock right out front, and, and there's a, a nice farmhouse. That's where I live. So I'm, I'm on campus, sort of like my boarding school days. You don't have to milk cows, do you, on the <laughs> <I> side? <do>. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Something they didn't tell you when you took the job. But uh, in your own uh, experience, what is the advantage of a Penfield school over other kinds of schools and public schools and so forth? What? I, think, I think every school is unique. and. Um, what what I find quite remarkable about Penfield is that kids literally can't wait to go to school. That they sort of bound in every day, and mm. and and the formula for I think successful education is really simple. You create an environment in which there is built-in respect, um, kindness. Um, openness and kids feel nurtured and supported. Have faculty that embrace that, mm. and then magic really occurs. That Pretty important. that yeah. that the model is something that I think schools across the country really can pretty much replicate. It's about size, a little bit smaller. I know every kid, I know every parent, I know every parent's car, yeah. and th that sense of belonging has such value. Sure. It's, kind of, it's sort of a, uh, a family. It is. It's, it's a large family, and it's a family with, with a common objective, mm -hmm. and we want kids to, and, and faculty and parents, to joyfully engage in learning to seek a greater understanding, and then to, in the context always of, of cordiality and respect. And when you set, I think with anyone, particularly with kids, if you set a bar high mm. and they know that you care, it, it, it works. Um, and it, it, and it's, it's self-perpetuating. There was a parent the other, uh, a couple months ago had shared with another parent that secondhand came to me and a son came as an eighth grader. So here's an eighth grade boy coming to Penfield. The school goes from preschool through grade eight. I was going to ask that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this mom said that, that Penfield was like a little bit of a slice of heaven before high school. That, that kids can be kids there. And there's, we do buddy programs, older kids and younger kids can do things together. And for, it's hard to verbally describe it. You have to, you have to see it for yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I think every place, every school has a lot of goodness that's happening. Uh, I think at Penfield, w we do too. And, and you can feel it when you go onto campus. Before. Before the program is over, I ask, I have to ask, where did Penfield name come from? That's a great, great story. So <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> who's Penfield? Never heard of him. So the story is, and, and so it was a new school. Um, there was the first board chair. Her name was Anna Tillinghast. And she was a meeting with folks. And what do you call this new place, this new experiment? And they decided. It's a new experiment. Let's call it the new school. Fast forward until 1992, there was a beloved assistant head of school. Her name is Isabel Penny. She, everyone from the 80s and the early 90s, comments about how she was really tough about teaching English but in a loving way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I remember um, Annie Sherman, um, she um, worked at the uh, Newport um, Daily News, you know, the Sherman family, yeah. and she had commented that her inspiration for writing came from Isabel. Sure. So Isabel was going to be retiring. Her husband, Roy Penny, was head of the English department at St. George's, and they decided they should name the school after the pennies. It was not a money thing. It was like, oh, they have so much money, we're going to get this. It was more sort of really adoration of what the pennies did. And so it was named the Penfield School in Isabel and Roy Penny's honor. 
and it, it's such a great story. Yeah. And people from that era, uh, letters that they write are are beautiful. People don't do that anymore. No. I mean, it's a quick email that often will be yeah, grammatically yeah. And now especially uh, with computers. grammatically uh, limited and so on. Yeah. Um, but her letters, just like Anna Tillinghast's letters that I've received over the years, are are really pieces of art. And I uh, really feel blessed to have people from that past who cared so much about the school. Oh, yeah. So oh, it, yeah. It's, it's a great story. Uh, how many students are there? At, at Penfield. So there are 160, 160 students about, you know, plus or minus. We, we have, it, 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 it fluctuates. We have about 40 military kids at the school, and depending mm. on when the classes come and go, um, and, and the military, I have such great respect for, for, the, for the dads and moms who work in the military, but also the, the families, the resilience that they have. And, these families come into the school, get right involved. They do. And that's that's yeah. And and it's um, and, and it is. And I had no idea the level of sacrifice that the families have. And 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 it's a happy time for the families, particularly when they're at Penfield, because mom and dad are together. And usually, it's you know one of the two would be at school. So we have about forty families, forty kids that are military. Um, we have we start with three year olds. So uh, and go through eighth graders. Wow, <laughs> it, it's a nice range. That's quite a range. Does that does that mean that there are uh, groups that have different grade levels in the same grouping? I so, mean, you can't you can't with 180 kids, you can't have different rooms for each sort of grade, right? Oh, yeah, Don't no, you have oh, to double? So we do. So, but but what we do every day is we have an assembly. And it, it's so darn cute that that the older kids and the younger kids are in the same oh, sure. group, and and, sure. and the little kids ask questions. Sure. The, the older kids will will um, applaud the younger kids when they sing a song or perform or say something in Spanish, and it, it, it's a lovely way to start the day. But we have we have a lower school and an upper school. Um, so upstairs in our second floor, that's where our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are that the, the model is to have two sections upstairs. So right now our, our eighth grade has 27 kids. So there'll be sections of 14 and 13. We mix them up a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. And then the younger kids, uh, it's one section of kids. Um, and it, it really works, it's great. It must be, <laughs> having been in the business, uh, education that is, uh, one of the challenges is scheduling and I would imagine in your situation, trying to provide for three-year-olds to high schoolers to have experiences and the curricular things must be quite a, a magic. Do you have a, a wand <laughs> or, or do you have a computer? Or how do you it, it's done manually. I mean, it's in, done manually, in, in, in yeah. In some I, ways, I thought so. a smaller school is harder to schedule than a larger school. Sure. Uh, you know, like, like the Portsmouth schools, right? So if you have seven sections of ninth grade you. English, it's easy to schedule that. I know what you're saying. Um, th that said, that, that it's done separately. We have the lower school kids have their schedule, and the upper school kids have their other. And, and our kids are very well prepared to go off to, whether it's Portsmouth High School or Middletown High or Tabor, Andover, Exeter, Lincoln School, um, they're ready. and. And, and well prepared because from my perspective that it's 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 important for kids to have this foundation and mm. once they have a solid foundation once they are um, secure in themselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wherever they go off to school th they're going to be well prepared and successful and end up doing some really cool things what uh, what is the advantage uh, I know what I want to ask you about the state. How, what's your relationship with the state? Does the state sort of, they, they have to bless you, right, as, as a, an institution? Uh, or a minor you, blessing, yes. A minor so, blessing. So, so the answer is, <laughs> uh, of course, that, that, that the state of Rhode Island 
um, and there are great folks that work for the Department of Education, that, that the state of Rhode Island has certain requirements, and, and there are health requirements, there are number, number of hours of instruction. Okay. Um, they want to make sure that we're offering right. certain courses, right. but there is no requirement from the state that we are teaching this particular program. There is no requirement from the state that, that we must use a specific standardized test. Um, what, what we have, like all schools that are accredited, and that's almost virtually every single school, that the, the public schools, the universities, uh, the independent schools have accrediting agencies. And ours is um, uh, the Association of Independent Schools in New England called ASNE. Mm -hmm. And what they do is that there are standards of accreditation that just like the public schools, yep. that we create a self-study. There's a visiting team that comes in, and, and it's, it's, it's a very thorough process uh, to make sure that we are meeting, that we are doing what we're saying we're doing, and, yep. and there's evidence of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I am not a fan of the state dictating to me what I mean, meaning the school, should do. I think it's important in the free market that we have, if, if people don't like what we're doing, they don't have to go, right? So it, it keeps us agile and it, we can change things if we need to based on what's happening uh, in the market. Mm. And I, I think it, it, it provides great opportunity that we have flexibility in independent schools to do certain things that other schools may not have. Do you get any state aid? Um, we get a tiny sliver of that for some professional development. Usually that's, that's the quid pro quo. We're going to give you a pile of money, but you have to do A, B, C, D, E. So if you don't need that money, and I, I don't mean that it, the way it sounds, no, no, but fine. you can be more flexible and, and do your own thing as you perceive it, and as your staff does, and your parents do. I, I assume you were all, you mu there must be a lot of parental involvement and the parents are awesome. I mean, and that's the whole point, that, that what makes a school successful is you want parent engagement. Sure. You want parents to, to feel like they can stop by and provide um, feedback t to me. And, and that's, a, again, I, I think an advantage of a small place is that I am not removed from anything. Again, I, I have an assembly every day that I see kids at checkout. Um, every single day after school, um, that that parents know that I'm accessible, and, and that's really important. But what I encourage parents, of course, is if they have a question about a math assignment or any of that stuff, that that they should go directly to the teacher first. But if there are any larger institutional questions, um, their feedback is is critical. I mean, they're our strongest allies, oh. as they should be. Well, they should be. It strikes me that um, you must have long days <laughs> because I love what I do. So, so I know you do. So I can I'm tell. So I can tell. But it's 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 a commitment beyond the clock, right? You don't you do, your your time is an eight to whatever. It's whatever is happening. You you're on you're Johnny on the spot or Rob on the spot, right? True or false? Of course. I, I am so lucky that I really love what I do. Mm. And, and, and I've been in education. I, my first year of teaching was 1986. And I've had a blast. I mean, there are always moments that are frustrating and all that. But they are very, very rare. And partly, f teachers at Penfield and lots of schools, most schools, they get all this positive affirmation that that having a place where you have little kids that joyfully are engaging in <laughs> learning, and um, and it, 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 it's remarkable. And I've said to my wife, right, I, I don't play the lottery, but if I did and I won a significant amount of money, I I would still do what I do. I would not say, oh, I'm going to go to Florida. And I would I, imagine that that's part of that's part of the interview process. If I interviewed you for that job, and I saw how much you're, how excited you are, how enthusiastic you are, and how much you love it, 
that would count big for me in terms of hiring you because I know I'd have somebody <laughs> who would who wouldn't be there um, you know just for the money or just for whatever just because it's a job I think and, it, and, and it's we, a life exactly but the same is true with the faculty so, so we have uh, we have we survey every year uh, faculty it's, it's a faculty satisfaction survey and the faculty adore working with their kids mm -hmm. and that's the most important everything else and everyone has their issues right and and now the concern you know we're not talking about this now would be the COVID-19 and what are we going to do about remote learning and all that I mean there are stressors everywhere oh yeah but, but the faculty yeah. when I say that the kids are bounding into school fa faculty are the same way and because it's I think that particularly elementary school kids can see right through people. They know whether you are <laughs> honest. And, no, they, I yeah. think they really can. Oh, I agree and, with you. And I think it gets more, um, as kids get older into high school and into college and all that, there can be, s people can be less genuine. I, I think faculty and, and kids are very genuine at, at Penfield School, and that's why I think it works um, so incredibly well. The one thing I want to talk about, if I, sorry. Oh, yeah, go quick it's, interjection. it's your show. Well, no, it's your show, but <laughs> it is one of the things that teachers and principals love talking, so please redirect me if I needed. But one thing that we, we just did starting in January is that we have reset our tuition. And, and part of that, no, I think 100% of that is that we want Penfield to be as accessible as it can be to to more people and that the independent schools the universities are pricing themselves out of the market oh, and, tell and, me about and it's it. just and granted they are extraordinary products but what's happening is that it's becoming more and more exclusive that that uh, I think it's important for parents at least of course in independent schools to to um, pay tuition, to, uh, to be invested in that. I think it's a little bit of the skin of the game. It's very, very important. But it has to be a reasonable amount of money that when secondary schools are at the $40,000 range for ninth grade, it, it just seems um, to, to, to be too exclusive. So we have looked at that, trying to go back a little bit to our roots to say that we want to be more open to have more people come into our school. And it, and it connects also with our 50th anniversary, which is c coming, we're, we're in the planning um, stages for that anniversary. And, and to say, we're, we're trying to go back to our roots because when the school was founded, parents literally were painting classrooms, moving chairs, where it, it was something where everyone pitched in that it wasn't, you yep. just needed to have a lot of money to attend the school. Um, so I, I'm really excited about it. The, the response from the number of inquiries is, is up. And I think that um, there will be a trend of secondary schools and other independent schools sort of looking at the pricing model and saying, you know what, we need to listen to people and, and say we need to adjust some of those numbers. What, what a, in terms of uh, a process of uh, finding out about Penfield and visiting it and applying, and is there financial aid, is there packages that way that people are? Uh, absolutely, so, so we, we don't want money to deter people from looking at the school. So by resetting it, that, that we feel like we're, we've already taken the list price and changed that in a favorable way to parents. Um, there is financial aid available. And, and the, like any place, it is going and seeing for yourself and, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> assessing that what, how do kids look to each other? What's the relationship between faculty and students? Um, what, what's the tone of the place? Oh, yeah. And, um, and yeah. we have a website that you can take a peek at. Um, so much is word of mouth that, that it, it's contacting other parents that send their kids to Penfield or have sent their kids to Penfield and just ask them, what do you think? 
uh, what's the school like? And um, sometimes people are reluctant to invest in education for younger kids, and I feel that front-loading there has such value. The worst thing imaginable would be a kid, sort of a middle school age kid, you know, 11 or 12 or 13 years old, hating school. I, I always, the number one thing is I want kids to enjoy being in school and to be pushed by the faculty. Oh, yeah, then we, it, it, it just works. We all wanted that, but your points are so well taken that uh, the, the laying the seed very early uh, to enjoy education, to be uh, uh, learning and having support all around you. And you know, growing up, you know, sometimes people say, uh, I wish I was your age. I don't do that because <laughs> I don't want to grow up again. It, it was a lot of zigs and zags. Maybe I didn't have all your loving teachers. I had, no, I, I won't get into that. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's an interesting, um, you, you didn't say anything about the arts or athletics or getting short on time. Oh, yeah, but, but, but absolutely. So, so one of the things that, that with independent schools, that if there are uh, financial pressures, that we are never going to um, change the, the focus on, on the arts, um, that, that humanizes people, that is a, is, is a great uh, way to express. So we have, we have after school theater in the fall that, uh, excuse me, in the spring that kids are performing. We do a lot of public speaking. All of our student or older students give assembly speeches that we have a music program, a robust art program, athletics that we had a, um, we had a student who was 6'2 in our eighth grade who could dunk for basketball. So, we, which, so our athletics have been great too. It, it's, I coach the B co-ed team in soccer. It's a blast. So all of those things are essential because it's not just learning, um, writing, and, and arithmetic, and, and, and all that. It's, it's about all the other things that, that are important. It's the arts, it's the athletics, it's the human relationships. What's important right now is we're running out of time. Rob, you've convinced me I'm going to sign <laughs> up. I'm going into my second uh, adolescence. Thanks a lot so much for being on the program. Rob Kelly, he's the head of Penfield School. That's it for this week on Portsmouth This Week. We'll see you next time. I have an additional uh, concern here, a, a, me a memo, that out of concern for the health and safety of our uh, chorus and audience, the Newport Navy Choristers Concert, which was scheduled to be at St. Barnabas Church this Sunday, the 15th, is being postponed until further notice. Please check the... Uh, Newport Navy Chorus's Facebook page and the website, which is www.newportnavychoristers.org for updates. Questions should be directed to uh, this phone number, 849-1135.